What's up guys, my name is Alec and today we're returning this old Toro snowblower into this. Well, not exactly this brown box, but we're gonna open it up here because we got mini bike parts from Go Power Sports. So thanks to them, this thing got here super quick. So let's check it out. So to do this build, I chose the Mega Moto 80. I got this from Go Power Sports. It was super cheap, around 350 bucks, shipped to my door. I didn't have to go out and buy anything used. Um, this thing's all brand new. I liked it because it had the suspension fork, so it's a little bit better than the really cheap mini bikes out there. And it's a great platform to build a custom bike. So now all we gotta do is put this thing together and then the fab work can begin. So now that we got this mini bike all together, all we gotta do is take the engine out of this Toro snowblower, six and a half horse two stroke, and uh, bolt it right into here with, well, maybe a little bit of fab work. So I got the engine all cleaned up here. And as you can see, I got a clutch on. So now I just got to make a bracket. Just transfer this over to metal and get cutting. See, I ground down all these existing holes and we're going to fill those in. And then I got this all ground down and ready to weld our new bracket on. I want to just make this look like there was never any pre existing holes here. I want to make it look all really clean and uh, like it's meant to be there. So I'm going to get to start welding. Just like that, I got the holes filled in and I got the engine mount welded on. You can see I just kind of stitch welded it here. Uh, I think it just matches the factory look better. You can see the plates kind of stitch welded here and here. So now I'm just gonna get this uh, hit with a little bit of black paint and uh, see how it looks. So as you can see, we got the engine totally bolted in now, and our next step is going to be fitting an exhaust pipe on here. And for this, I'm going to be using this expansion chamber. This is actually off of a Polini 50cc. So I had a couple of these later on, and it looks like it's going to fit pretty good. Uh, in one way or another, we're going to have to cram it in there. 
And uh, first things first, I'm gonna have to make a flange to go from the old snowblower engine to this exhaust pipe. So we'll get started on that first. So here's a little trick I use for making templates for like this flange. I just take a paint marker, you could take paint, anything, highlight your area, and then I put a little piece of duct tape on there, and then I just transfer that over to my metal. And you can tell it's not perfect, but it gives me a pretty good baseline of what to go off. And uh, I can just take some measurements from there and get it cut exact. so I got the exhaust pipe all welded up I just made this little flange here and kind of got the angle right welded it all together obviously it's not totally pretty I only have a MIG welder right now so I did the best with what I could do this just needs to be filed down a little bit but overall it came out pretty good and then you can see here I added a mount to the frame so this pipe will just sit right in there and utilize that factory mount. So the expansion chamber is mounted in now, just kind of temporary, but the bracket worked out good. Everything lines up, so now I just gotta get the silencer fitted into place. And I'm kind of thinking center exit, so I might have to modify the bend of this pipe to get it perfectly centered here. So we'll have to do that and see how it looks, go from there. So I got this bracket welded on here and I just welded it right underneath the seat tab so it sits flat and then the silencer is just going to go in right here and it's going to clamp, squeeze that together and then the silencer is going to exit right here in the center. So I'm just modifying this mid pipe to give it a little more bend to make it work perfectly. And just got done modifying the silencer a little bit so I just had to make a cut here and then just re-weld it. I just put a little high temp paint on there to make it look nice. That's all in. Now this thing will just squeeze right on there. And that's kind of the look of the silencer. So I'm gonna get that all bolted up and then we'll move on to the next part. So the exhaust system is now completed. Rubber bushing to help with vibration. Looking back, I probably should have made this flange out of a bit thicker steel, but we're gonna try this out. If it doesn't leak or warp, we'll leave it. Otherwise, I'll have to change that out. But this thing is completely bolted together and it looks really nice. So. Next thing, we gotta get a gas tank on here. So I just picked this little uh, fuel tank up off of eBay. It was like $10. And this thing has a flat bottom, so it's gonna sit pretty nicely on these rails here. So we just gotta get some brackets made up and get this thing mounted to the frame. And uh, we'll be good. So as you can see, I got the gas tank brackets done and this thing's fitted in there really nice. Now we just gotta get a fuel shut off mounted to the frame for our fuel line and then get this intake situated and get that carburetor in there. Next up, I got to get this fuel shut off up onto the frame here. So I'm gonna get a tab cut out and weld it onto the frame and that way we control the on off to our carburetor. Alright, so I just got done building this little intake elbow here. That's because I took the factory aluminum intake and I just cut the horn off and then I was able to trace this onto a piece of steel. So I put it on a piece of steel, cut it out, drilled it, and then I just took a little round pipe, welded it around. So that's just going to go right on there. So I'm just going to use this little piece of hose as a coupler.
I just got done doing some uh, internal cable routing. What I did is I ran these two cables through the hole behind this little plastic plate. And then the brake cable runs down and underneath and it's going actually through the engine bracket. I drilled a hole through there. So it's using that as a, a cable guide and then back to the rear brake. That just looks a lot cleaner than having the cables uh, tied to the outside of the frame in my opinion. Uh, we're gonna have to get this kill switch uh, wired up to this engine and then after that we're gonna have to run the throttle cable down through this as well so we can get that all tucked away to where they're not really seen. Kind of a hidden clean look. Got the throttle cable ran through the frame up to the throttle and it's working pretty good. So that uh, finishes the uh, carburetor setup. So the next thing to address here is going to be the sprocket. On the engine, we have a one inch shaft. So in order to use that, I had to go with the clutch that uses a 420 size chain. And then the factory sprocket on this uses a number 35 size chain. And they're not compatible. The teeth are just cut differently and the chains just will not work. So we're going to have to get this number 35 sprocket off and replace it with a sprocket that's compatible with a 420 chain. So we're going to work on that right now. take this factory on off switch key switch and then this mini bike kill switch and I'm just gonna wire these two together I'm gonna be using these little bullet connectors they call them so I just gotta strip the wires back on each of these and get these things uh, in place like that this thing is running riding it moves under its own power it needs a lot of fine tuning and some tweaks i don't really like the gearing that it has now so i'm going to be changing that out and uh, just modifying a couple other things i'll probably strip it all down to get it powder coated but for now this is a running riding bike and it's been a lot of fun to build stick around uh, i'll have a part two and we'll get this thing all redone right now it's going about 35 34 35 miles an hour downhill so it cooks pretty good but I want to give it a little bit more acceleration, so we'll have to change that up. But other than that, this thing is done. Thanks for watching.